So as I've been saying, companies bailed out with public money, your money, have paid shareholders billions of pounds, not millions, billions of pounds in dividends while cutting tens of thousands of jobs in the UK. This is a Vice News investigation. And uh, Ben Smoke, a contributing editor at Huck magazine and the journalist behind this investigative report for Vice News, joins me now. Ben. Hi, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. So what have you found? Yeah, so uh, as you said, um, companies accessing the COVID corporate financing facility, which is one of a number of um, kind of bailed out funds and facilities brought in by Chancellor Rishi Sunak in March to deal with um, the impending corona economic crisis. Um, companies, and the, the, as I, sh I should say, the companies that are accessing this are only the largest and biggest companies. So they have to have had an investment grade as of March the 1st of this year and also make a material contribution to the UK economy. Um, they apply to the Bank of England, who are administering the fund for the Treasury, and then they decide, yes, you, you are, you're, you're um, eligible to have some of this money, um, which is accessed through what's called commercial paper, which is a form of debt. It's, it's a loan, um, but it's incredibly favourable terms. So these, these loans are given a 0.2 to 0.6% interest. And to kind of give you an idea of how favourable that is, some of the other loans, that, uh, other small, much smaller companies that are able to access the up to 6%, some of them I've seen are 9%, in interest, and so these companies, these massive companies, uh, with billions and billions of pounds of, of revenue going through uh, their bank accounts each year, have accessed, as you said, billions of pounds, 18.9 billion pounds of public money at a time when people across the country are losing their jobs, they are starving, um, and yeah, and, uh, the investigation that we did found that 30% of those, uh, at the time when we, cause obviously companies can, can pay them back early. So at the time when we did the investigation, um, there were 68 companies that had funds out through the CCFF. 30% of those had paid dividends uh, to shareholders. And we found out that eight of them had paid dividends after receiving this government money. And three of those companies, uh, eight of them, sorry, uh, had paid com had paid the dividends out and then laid off staff. Obviously, this is, this is a scandal as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure as, as far as all of your listeners are concerned as well. Well, let's just um, think about what we're talking about, because you, you're saying that the companies that have been lent the money, they are uh, you know, highly upstanding, um, very well uh, uh, backed companies. I think but then might could, be slightly too far. Well, OK. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but but they, they seem to be on a, a solid footing. But could you not also have said that of Bear Stearns and Enron and Northern Rock and RBS and all of these giant corporations that fell over uh, with um, with devastating consequences, that a company looks good until it doesn't? Look, sure, absolutely. And you know, without doubt, coronavirus is, I think, mean, you know, the figures that came out today, uh, as much as the Bank of England were kind of trying to dam, uh, like dampen them down, they, they are damning. They expect that GDP in this country is going to fall by 9.5%. By Richard Bank today released figures that indicate that the UK recession um, this year is going to be the worst since 1710, um, predicting an 11.5% contraction of our economy. So we absolutely can't be too careful uh, where you know, protecting jobs is concerned. And I really think that, that last bit is the most important part. And, and when you say, you know, these companies look good until they don't, Absolutely, I, I completely take your point there. But if we look at a company like Schlumberger, who is an, an oil giant who posted £33 billion pounds of revenue in 2019, when I went to them and said to them, hi, I'm writing this piece, I've seen that you've taken this money, I've seen that you've also not only paid out dividends, but you're planning on um, cutting up to 90 jobs at one of your subsidiaries in Scotland. Do you have any comment on that? All, all they did was point me to their quarterly, their second quarterly results, which showed that the company reported £5.2 billion pounds in worldwide revenue. Well, that doesn't seem to me like a company that really should be, at this point in time, should be the priority for the Chancellor. It's, it's when, also uh, the case, isn't it, that it's against the, uh, the the greening of the economy to support oh. companies that are dealing in fossil fuels. Absolutely. And, you know, it, within this sort of list of companies, you've got four airlines who have been supported. And I think, uh, you know, I reported on an action that was done by the uh, UK uh, Student Climate Network, who have been doing the amazing work around the uh, climate strikes every Friday in this country. Um, 
they did an action last month outside of the Bank of England and the Treasury kind of pointing this out. And the, the Bank of England were due to implement a review into their financing to make sure that their financing was kind of in line with the Paris Agreement and with the gravity of the climate crisis. Now, Andrew Bailey, the, the governor of the Bank of England, said they didn't implement that on this, this finance, uh, on this, this COVID corporate financing facility, uh, because the the priority at that point was to protect jobs. I mean, that clearly isn't true, is it? Because... Well, it, ha- it hasn't done it. Yes, quite. Yeah. If, if that was the intention, then they failed in that regard. But let's um, just back off a, a moment and, um, and, and, and look at the conditions that were attached to the money that was handed out at virtually 0% um, uh, uh, interest. What conditions did Rishi Sunak attach to this money, if any? Well, there weren't, there weren't any, and I think this is this is really the scandal. I mean, apart from you know the obviously the obvious condition that, that one has to pay back a loan, but there were no economic or environmental stipulations attached to this. And I think that you know obviously the paying of dividends is you know is deplorable, and you know fundamentally, if a company has enough money to put millions and as I said billions of pounds in the coffers of shareholders, then it certainly has enough money to pay its staff and to keep its staff on board. But actually, this is much wider and it's much bigger in terms of that that instance where Rishi Sunak and Andrew Bailey, Chancellor and Governor of the Bank of England, decided not to implement any stipulations whatsoever. And as I said, these companies are, you know, they, they are made up of some of the biggest polluters. Ryanair, for example, is another company who got you know, access to money through this fund. They've been listed as one of the top 50 polluters in Europe. We're not talking about kind of little, yeah, little things here, and it really does sort of beg a belief that we, that the Chancellor hasn't taken this opportunity to restructure society, knowing that we have less than ten years to avert immovable climate crisis, something that we'll never come back from, that we'll you know, see the extinction of the human race, and is already seeing death across the, the global south. It's it's criminal. Well, let's think about the, uh, the the element of paying back, of course. He's not giving them the money. They do have to pay it back at some point in the future. So people might think, well, what's the big deal? Of, of course. And, you know, they do. And, and when they first took it out, it was on... It, they had to pay it back within a year. They, the Bank of England have now indicated that they can. And I should say also that the Bank of England, on the 19th of March, did announce that any companies accessing money after that point would have to provide a letter saying that they were going to show restraint where paying dividends hmm. and executive but, pay. But is that obviously. is that not completely meaningless? What does that mean? Well, show it's restraint. Obviously. obviously, it's completely meaningless. And you know what? Show restraint in the, in terms of what? In terms of uh, you know the compared the, to what? I mean, exactly. I mean, I, um, restraint, uh, f- financial restraint. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sure it'd be completely different to uh, what your average CEO might uh, consider. Well, exactly. And I, I think what this has shown is the kind of the rot in wider society and this, this idea that we must protect. Yeah, because what essentially we're doing is we're protecting the profits here, aren't we? We're protecting the profit margins by giving this money. And, and yes, you're right, it is a loan and it is it will be paid back. And there are some companies like Amcor, which we reported on in the piece, who have, they did pay back their loan last week. But the fact is that this money had to be used by the government. It had to be found and given to these companies at a moment. I think it was the the Trussell Trust said that in the first couple of weeks of lockdown, they gave out 50,000 food parcels to people that had no access to food. And that was the the time when the government was finding these billions of pounds to bail out these companies. And it just sort of begs belief. Does it also um, not, um, I mean, my, my knowledge of um, things financial is um, a bit uh, thin, but once this money has been created, essentially they just invent it out of nothing, don't they? And then they hand it to these companies and they then take that that money that doesn't exist and then they, when they award it to themselves as the dividends and bonuses and so on, then it does become real because they actually have that money to spend in their accounts. Does that think, not also have economic consequences for the future, that all of this extra money that has just come from nowhere and has found itself into the, uh, the bank accounts of the, what you could describe as the 1%? Well, 
Well, I think you know, there are a couple of points there. Firstly, it exists as soon as the commercial paper is issued. As soon as that happens, there is an injection of cash. I mean, the average payout was £300 million. Some companies like Fast, who are one of the biggest companies in Europe, got a billion pounds from this fund. As soon as they issue those commercial papers, that money exists in their accounts. Um, and then when we're talking about them sort of paying it back to themselves, yeah, obviously that has implications. And the implications are, as we know, from decades of, uh, you know, the, of society being as it is, that money doesn't come back down to the people going out to work and, and then losing their jobs, struggling to eat, struggling to send their kids to school, uh, because, you know, for example, travel is being cut in London, uh, all of those sort of things. That money just stays in these offshore accounts. You know? There were... Oh, <coughs> sorry, I can't quite remember the figure now, but there are... There are companies on this list that have been linked to tax havens uh, they have you know their their sort of ultimate parent company are registered in places like the netherlands or the bahamas um all of which are you know well-known tax havens and so what we're talking about here is this sort of money disappearing out of the coffers of the treasury at a time when people in this country really desperately need it and ending up sitting up in these, the bank accounts of, as you said, the 1%, and it, you know, the dividends are going out in, in terms of EasyJet, for example. They paid out, and to be fair to them, they did try and get out of paying their dividends, and they legally couldn't. So they ended up paying out tens of millions of pounds um, in dividends to their founder, Stelios, who is a well-known billionaire, who then went on the, the attack when people were questioning that in March at the time when we were going into lockdown, saying, well, why should I give this money back? Why should I do that? And I really do think fundamentally that shows part of the problem here. And people like that who are saying, why should I give the money back? When there are people on the street starving and there are tens of thousands of people in this country about to die from this virus, really shows the disparity uh, we're in coronavirus. I remember interviewing um, a fellow cabinet minister at the time, and we were talking about something different. And I, I remember him saying to me, oh, you know, coronavirus is going to be the great leveler because it's, it's, it's going to hit people and, and, and it will take people out and it'll be irrelevant of who you are. And, and fundamentally, we've seen that that's not the case. Yeah. Um, you know, we know that it's obviously hit BAME communities much harder. We know that it's hit people on the front lines much harder. These people who are giving interviews from their villas in Marbella or from their, their <laughs> Saint-Tropez villas, they're yes. not being hit by it, are they? No. What they're getting is dividends paid from government coffers while all of their workers are being laid off and starving by fighting for their lives against this virus. And, and you, uh, just to interrupt, just, just finally, you said that uh, you know th this money is to prop up the companies and to ensure their profitability and their long-term health, but that mm -hmm. actually isn't what's happening, is it? The money is going straight through the companies to the shareholders and the CEOs, and the company itself has to then find extra money to pay it back. So the companies future profitability is being affected by the money that they borrowed that has gone through the company to the shareholders and the CEOs. Is that right? Absolutely. And, you know, I should say that it's not every single company that's done this. And there, are, there obviously are lots of companies on that list that are desperately in need. And, you know, irrelevant of kind of other considerations, you know, these, these these companies represent tens of thousands of jobs and we absolutely should be intervening to help save those jobs but that it really shouldn't look like just giving a blank check to the people at the top that have continually um you know fostered this environment that means that they prosper while everybody else is suffering yeah. and we've seen that in the last 10 years since the financial crisis and unfortunately it looks like it's just repeating itself again uh, yes, and that's precisely, I mean, I'm no seer and I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a brain of, uh, of any uh, description, but I, I knew exactly what was going to happen when the government started throwing money around, that that's where it would end up. Uh, ben, good to talk to you. Thanks for that. That's Ben Smoke, contributing editor at Huck magazine and the journalist behind an investigative report for Vice News, which you can read on their website. And uh, that's what we're talking about this evening. Oh, three, four. Yes, we're talking about the amount of money of yours that has been uh, created out of nothing and has been given to companies, and it's uh, sluiced straight through those companies into the bank accounts of the super-rich, um, which will significantly influence the future profitability of those companies. But who cares, because the rich got richer. And... Um, 
All the while, of course, this was uh, given with the, uh, with the publicly stated intention of protecting jobs, and it doesn't appear to have done that. This is a story in uh, Vice News, uh, the uh, author I spoke to in the last hour. Companies bailed out with public money have paid shareholders billions, not millions, billions of pounds of your money in dividends while cutting tens of thousands of jobs in the UK at the same time. On the 17th of March, Chancellor Rishi Sunak announced the launch of the Covid Corporate Financing Facility, a scheme to support large firms that make, quotes, a material contribution to the UK economy. Vice News found that 30% of the companies currently accessing emergency funds through this facility have paid out an estimated total of £11.5 billion pounds in dividends to shareholders and investors. In total, 26 companies receiving financial assistance through this scheme have cut jobs or announced plans to make layoffs, totaling at least 42,000 UK jobs. So if the intention was to keep jobs, it's failed. Of the companies issuing dividends during this period, three have also announced the redundancies totaling around 6,000 jobs. This scheme is only open to large companies that were in uh, what they call decent financial health before the outbreak of the pandemic. But, excuse me. But um, as I uh, mentioned to uh, Ben before, the author of this report, enormous companies look like they are on a sound financial footing until they aren't. And we all know about RBS and Northern Rock and uh, Enron and Bear Stearns and all of those corporations. All of these loans come with interest rates of between 0.2 and 0.6%, which is not available to you. It's not available to smaller businesses. They may be able to go through a commercial bank and borrow at interest rates of up to 6%. Of course, if you are running a small business, you may be keeping it going by using your credit card, which means that you'll be paying an interest rate of 30%. It would be cheaper to borrow it off the mafia. Author and economist Grace Blakely told Vice News the government's handed a huge blank cheque to private businesses while everyone else struggles with the deepest economic crisis on record. The fact that these companies have used that cash to pay dividends rather than support workers or undertake investment is unconscionable. This is corporate welfare, plain and simple. Meanwhile, the real welfare system is straining under the huge pressures of mass unemployment. And we ain't seen nothing yet. It's true, isn't it, that uh, right-wing governments hate the concept of socialism. They don't want to give money to the poor because they are feckless and they will spend it on comics and sweets and lie about drinking Stella and watching TV all day, they think. But when it comes to handing out uh, free money to corporations, well, that uh, type of socialism is just uh, uh, financial probity. On May the 19th, the Bank of England announced any company wishing to withdraw, wishing to, wishing to draw rather from this scheme, uh, with the term going beyond the 21st of May next year, must sign a letter committing to restraint where paying dividends and executive pay were concerned. <laughs> what does that mean? That's a PR exercise, if ever I saw one. I mean, what is restraint to you is probably not what restraint means to them. Restraint to them might mean they forego a half of their £10 million bonus. I mean, that's that, that may seem like the very embodiment of, it, of restraint to them. But it looks pretty generous to us. And as I say, m many of these aren't even British companies, for crying out loud. These are companies that earn billions and billions and billions of pounds and I'm sure are very uh, aggressive when it comes to uh, paying their uh, tax, employ vast buildings of uh, accountants in order to minimise their tax takes to make their uh, accounts as efficient as possible. And uh, yet we've decided 
uh, well, it's, it has been decided on our behalf that these are um, companies that should be in receipt of what essentially looks like free money. It looks like free money to the recipients. The companies themselves have to pay it back. But that will come out of their future profits. The money has gone straight into the accounts of the shareholders and the CEOs in the form of bonuses. It's increased the price, the, the value of the shares, which will kick off bonuses of CEOs. I bet share buybacks will be the next scandal, because it was the last time around. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't we uh, uh, fall into the same quotes mistake again? It looks like a mistake from uh, our uh, eyes, but uh, it looks like more like intention when you think about it. If they keep doing the same thing over and over again, and the government keeps facilitating that, well, it's not a mistake, is it? Potter's Bar. Hello, Joan. Oh, hello, Nick. I was crying at the beginning of the hour because of the common sense you were talking, you old commie, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I want to raise is the money that should have gone to the people who are working at home.